What we just covered in the last video is called a one sample t-test. That's where we have one sample of observations or individuals and we're comparing them against a group mean. The only difference between that and a z-test is we don't know the population standard deviation so we have to estimate it. <clears throat> Another flavor of t-test is something called a repeated measures or within subjects t-test. That's where we still have one sample but we're measuring the same people from point A to point B. So we have them at one time point, we introduce some manipulation, and then we measure them after we've introduced that experimental manipulation. It could be a drug, it could be an exercise or a therapy, anything. We just want to know if there's a difference from one time point to another as a result of some treatment or experimental manipulation. In this case, let's say that we have ratings about how happy somebody feels. Okay, this is just arbitrary scale, arbitrary numbers, and we have five people at one time point called before, and we show them pictures of attractive people. And if we do that, we measure their subjective happiness ratings at time point two or after. You might see this represented as x1, x2, time point one, time point two. The point is you have them before the experimental manipulation and after the manipulation. So we have all of our numbers, and with this type of t-test, what we're interested in is the difference for each individual. So for each individual, we have their score before and after, and we take the difference between those two scores. So we have a third column right here called D for difference, and we simply take the difference from before and after. So subtract the score before from the after value, and in this case, for subject 1, we get 31 minus, or sorry, 28. Let me try that one more time. 31 minus 28 is 3. We do that for all five subjects, and then we take the mean difference. Okay. This is important because with a repeated measures design, our null hypothesis is that there should be no difference. Remember, null hypothesis means there's no effect. So in that case, we would suspect that on average there shouldn't really be a meaningful difference from time point one to time point two. Right? So you can see up here I have some of my parameters written out. For the null hypothesis, the mean difference, it's a mu subscript d, is going to equal zero. My alternative hypothesis, let's say it's a one-tailed test in this case, and I think that the mean difference is going to be greater than zero. Okay? That's why we calculate this mean difference down here simply the average of all these different scores. Next, I take each subject's difference and I subtract the mean difference from that difference. Okay? So 3 minus the mean difference, or 0.8, this is for the first subject, it's going to be negative 1.8. And I do that for every single subject. So now in this column I have the difference between each different score and the mean difference. Lastly, I want to take the sums of squares of all of those. Okay, so I simply take the square of each of these values I computed in this column, and I add them all up to get the sum of squares term. This gives me some estimate for the variance in my sample, and I can use that to estimate the population variance.